Hello, everyone, and welcome to the February meeting for the Merceboro Parks and Recreation Commission. And uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And as it is our, uh, our pleasure, we'll call on Councilman Eddie Smotherman for the prayer and pledge, please. Thank you, Eddie. If you would, please bow with me. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the many blessings in this wonderful city that we live in. We pray for the family of Bob Lamb as they continue to mourn and grieve their situation. Lord, uh, we pray that you be with our police officers and our firefighters and all the city employees, uh, especially the Parks and Recreation staff for the phenomenal job they do. We're so grateful. We pray that you'll look over us as we go through this meeting today and keep, uh, keep, keep your hands wrapped around us so that we make the right decisions. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Smotherman. And before you, Commission members, we have uh, the minutes from last month's meeting. If you'll take a second and look that over, and then I'll take a motion that we accept. There are no questions or comments. I move for approval. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, first item for new business is uh, consideration of a Make Music Workshop. And we have uh, Caitlin Stevenson, is she here? Hey, Caitlin. Hi there. Um, I would like to seek approval for Make Music Workshops. So this workshop, which will be once a month, is for ages five and under for kids to get the chance to have hands-on experiences with all different kinds of instruments. At Cultural Arts, we have quite a collection of instruments. We've got ukuleles, tambourines, maracas, little keyboards, and a wide variety of percussion instruments that the kids can play, and I can introduce those instruments to them. We'll also do a little craft where they can make a little instrument and take it home. Uh, for example, this, for this month, um, I was planning to do little maracas. So, but through this, through these experiences, it encourages motor, social, and cognitive skills. And um, I think it'll also foster a joy for making music in our young children that will influence the rest of their lives. The program is $3 per class per child, and kids under two get in free. And I estimate between five and 15 kids will probably come to each class. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Yes, uh, where will this take place at? This will take place at McFadden Community Center. Okay, I see it on the back, okay. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sure the parents will love when you, uh, after they make some instruments to bring home so they can beat on them or shake them around all day so yes yeah <laughs> you know they all get excited when they yeah, find yeah. out it's drums <laughs> I, I remember as a kid the drum set that i had and my, my mom always liked when i played the drums early in the morning so. <laughs> <laughs> yes oh it's gonna be fun <laughs> any other questions sounds like a great program do i have a motion that we uh approve this uh make music workshop so be it <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Good job. <laughs> okay. Next piece of new business, Thomas uh, is going to go over the athletic lease agreements. And I think there's a number of them, and we're going to kind of look at them and consider them all under one motion is that right good afternoon members of the commission as you know this time of year we're getting ready to go back to the ball fields outside athletic fields uh, and part of that the city partners with a lot of organizations to ensure that we provide programs uh, for all sports across the board 
uh, within our facility. So I just wanted to kind of walk through some of those agreements. They're, all of them are returning agreements, ones we've done in the past. Uh, but we'll start on the, the south end of town at Barfield Crescent Park. We have the Murfreesboro Baseball Association, the NBA. They provide baseball and softball for a little over 1,200 kids. Uh, the unique thing about this organization is that they offer two types of leagues. They offer a traditional recreational league, but they also offer a bring your own team type travel league in, in today's environment where travel ball is very popular. That gives our citizens an opportunity to play during the week and then they can travel on the weekends. So they do a wonderful job of meeting the needs. Uh, and then they provide also softball both the same, they have a travel league or a bring your own team type league and then a, a traditional recreational league. Also at Barfield Crescent Park is the Milton C. Disc Golf Association. They have about 200 members. They provide weekly and monthly disc golf events, leagues uh, for our citizens to take, a, take part in. Uh, if you're ever out at Barfield and you see the disc golf course, it is very active. A lot of people playing, and the more people play, the more they seek out organized events and things. So MTDGA does a great job for us making sure that there are both competitive and non-competitive events there at the park. As we move, uh, staying in line with baseball, the Murfreesboro Little League, they play, operate out of McKnight Park, the Starplex Complex. Uh, Murfreesboro Little League's been around for over 50 years. They service a little over 600 kids. They're a traditional recreational league so that kids can sign up, teams are formed. Parity is very important. They're members of Little League International uh, and they're affiliated which, which was formerly the Optimus Little League. So now they're Murfreesboro Little League. Also in that same park is the Stones River Kiwanis Club. Stones River Kiwanis provides softball for a little over 500 girls ages 5 to 17. Uh, they're a traditional recreational league uh, and but they do workshops and camps uh, and try to help fill the need for the travel teams and find girls to play in those. Most of their leagues play Monday through Friday so that kids that do do travel ball have that opportunity as well. They're also a great partner in that we do a lot of our uh, tournaments on the weekends so they coordinate their schedule so that we're able to bring teams in from out of town to help uh, boost the economic impact there. Also there in McKnight Park, we have the uh, Latino American League. They provide a uh, Hispanic soccer league uh, for about 200 to 300 residents. They play on Saturday afternoons and Sundays. A very popular league. If you're out there, uh, they'll be glad to feed you if you want to come watch your games. And it's really good uh, tacos and burritos there. So, uh, But we're proud to have them. The, Hispanic folks in the, the Latino American League. Also in McKnight Park, we have the Murfreesboro Lacrosse League. Uh, they service about 200 youth, and lacrosse is continuing to grow in popularity. Uh, speaking with TWSAA, we're probably five years from it becoming a sanctioned sport in Tennessee. Once that hit, lacrosse on the rec level will explode. So we're trying to stay out in front of that, ensure that they've got adequate places to play and that we're providing for this up and coming sport. Uh, as we move on to the, the north end of town, we have the Murfreesboro Soccer Club who provides soccer for a little over 1,200 uh, youth and about 200 adults. Uh, they provide both a recreational program and a select travel type program uh, which includes player development. Uh, also we have the Murfreesboro Football Club which is a uh, organization that is uh, a branch of a Nashville organization, uh, but they provide uh, competitive soccer uh, and more of the uh, the best of the best typically will play with them and they were proud to say won a state championship as the first one brought home to Murfreesboro. So we we're proud of this group. Uh, we want to make sure that we offer that high level of competition so this group helps us fit that need uh, for those elite athletes in our community. We certainly don't want them going other places. Uh, in addition to that, we have a partnership with the, the county schools. Uh, there is a use agreement to allow county schools to play soccer at our soccer facilities. We host the district soccer tournament for both boys and girls. Uh, and typically in Rutherford County, as you know, uh, these schools all play in the same district. So the, the district tournament rotates around. 
Uh, so they typically play at Richard Siegel Park for district and then at regional level. But we also try to offer at least one game per season for all our high school soccer teams because we know they share a football field uh, and share facilities. So oftentimes soccer gets the out. We want to make sure we're able to highlight our facility uh, and ensure that all of our kids have a great place to play. We also have a partnership with the uh, Central Magnet School. They utilize Starplex field number five and they use uh, McKnight field number one. And then for their middle school baseball, they utilize uh, Barfield number four. Uh, but because they are in town and in a historical district are unable to build their own facilities, uh, they play baseball and softball uh, at city parks. And that partnership's worked out really well. Uh, and that's most all of our partnerships. We do have one other partnership that we do with uh, USA Flag Football, and they provide in the spring flag football for youth. Uh, since they are a for-profit organization, it's more of a rental than a partnership. So they rent the field and space for us and actually pay for that. Uh, the rest of these organizations are nonprofit. Uh, they meet all the city's requirements of a $1 million insurance policy along with having a governing body with a board of directors and they identify one liaison to work with the city. So my recommendation is that we approve uh, signing these partnerships once more. Any questions for Thomas? A lot of leases there. Thank you for your uh, good work along with the legal staff for, and the groups preparing all these leases. So do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion. Approved. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, next piece of new business. Pam Williams is showing up for the arts. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, so today I have an exciting marketing campaign that I would love for you to approve. And it is called Show Up for the Arts in Murfreesboro. Uh, in cultural arts, we were really inspired when a few years ago, the Greenway put out the campaign Park Smart, and we were really impressed that it was just to teach people how to park more safely and encourage them to do that and give them the confidence to keep going to our parks and our greenways and feel uh, really safe while they do that and give them a set of best practices of how to do so. And um, seeing the success of that campaign, we wanted to uh, do something similar to encourage people to support the arts in our city. And so we came up with Show Up for the Arts in Murfreesboro. And a lot of people come to us and they say, how can we support um, our arts culture here? And what we always tell them is, every band has played for an audience of just a couple people. Every actor has performed for a small audience. Every artist has done an art show and no one showed up. And just the most important thing you can do in the first step that you can do to support the arts is to just show up. And so that is where we wanted to start with this campaign. And so what we're doing is every three months, uh, so the first one is January through March, we're setting, we're giving out a list of things to do to show up for the arts. And they're really easy, accessible things like go to an art show, go see a band play, uh, to encourage people to see that they don't have to buy a $5,000 painting to be a supporter of the arts. They can do it in really simple ways. And, um, and we want it to be for families to go do together, friends to do together, uh, kids can do it, adults can do it. And so every three months we're gonna be putting out a new checklist and they can complete it and then take a picture of it or scan it and email it to us or they can mail it to us and then we're gonna send them one of these bumper stickers, which I made sure all of you had one in front of you too so you could see them and put them on your car if you want to. And um, the way that we're kind of getting the word out about this is that we're putting it in our cultural arts zine and a zine is just a small paper publication. It's like a mini magazine and we've been doing that for, uh, we've had that zine for a little over a year so it goes out to all the coffee shops and places where people like to hang out, and it goes to our community centers. And in that zine, it has articles about local artists, and it has lists of uh, art shows and other arts events. So this list will go in there as well, and so they'll be able to see the list and then turn the page and say, oh, well, okay, it says go to an art exhibition. The next page is a list of arts ex exhibitions. So we're trying to make it really easy for people 
to go out and support the arts. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Questions for Pam? Sounds like fun. Yeah. Do we have a motion? I move approval. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Great, Pam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the next item on the agenda, Susan Hicks. Hey, Susan. Hi, good afternoon. How are y'all doing? We're good. Um, I'm here to ask for approval for our beginning sewing with a master seamstress class that we're offering uh, through cultural arts. This program is to teach 10 to 17 year olds the lost art of sewing. It's, we're going to start by teaching them basic hand stitching and then we're going to move on to teaching them some basic skills with machine sewing. It's an eight week class taught by um, Amy Hip who is the uh, costume person at MTSU at Tucker Theater, and she designs uh, amateur and professional as well. She will be uh, teaching this class for 10 to 17 year olds, and it will be for 10 students at a time. Um, completing this course will allow the participants to have a sense of accomplishment and pride in themselves and learning a new skill. And it's just, uh, just something that people don't know how to do anymore. As I costume with my, um, with our theater perform Murfreesboro, I've discovered that we are lacking in seamstresses. And it's a great skill for children to know how to do, to be able to sew on their own buttons, to be able to fix a zipper, and to actually be able to even sew a purse or a little something for their parents for Christmas. So um, do you have any questions for me? Not open for 46 year olds. <laughs> there is a huge interest from the parents, but I usually only work with children. The art was actually lost about 30 years ago. That's yes. <laughs> what Velcro is for. <laughs> it's awesome. Good luck. Uh, I'll move for approval. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Motion approves. Thank you so much, Thank Susan. You. Okay. Next item on the agenda is uh, artist workshop, and May is here to present. Hi, um, Cultural Arts Murfreesboro would like approval for a new program entitled the Emerging Artist Workshop Series, which will serve local artists who would like to further their career in the arts and take their craft to a more professional level. This series will consist of seven workshops, which will be free and open to the public and we'll be covering topics such as portfolio development, writing a biography, artist statement, resume, and exhibition history, managing social media and marketing, building a website, and how to photograph their work. Um, following the workshop series, we'll also be granting artists periodic access to our lighting kit and backdrop with our, excuse me, artwork photography days so that they can have updated portfolios. Any questions? Any questions for May? Do I have a motion that we uh, approve this workshop? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you so much, May. Okay, next on the agenda, um, Bradley uh, Academy has uh, a new exhibit. So, Von Chell, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Yes, yeah, so Bradley Academy Museum, we are, it is, our recomm it is recommended that the commission approve the Roots Art Exhibition. Bradley Academy will be, well, we're celebrating 100 years this year. And so we wanted to go out to our educators, the community, and also the youth, and have them play a part in our 100 year celebration. And so, with that, we have three dates, April 7th, August 4th, and December 1st. The April 7th um, art exhibition will first go for the art educators. So it's any art teachers, anyone teaching in the actual community centers, or um, artists in, in our senior citizen uh, homes as well. With this, um, we'll actually do 
an actual showcase of their history. So it's not just African American history, it's the origins. Um, let's see. We'll, we'll showcase the artwork, the culture, the country's origin, their traditions, and also their roots. And so um, the unique part is we're going with the art educators first, and then we'll go with the community, and we'll conclude our series with the youth. And we have quite a few, few educators who are interested, and in, we want, um, I guess this platform to encourage our educators to go on to the submittable on the cultural arts um, page and you can just submit your artwork and I have does anyone have any questions as you got many great programs over there on shell thank you so much so do I have a motion that we approve this uh, roots art exhibit move approval Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank Motion you. passes. Thank you, Bonchelle. Okay, moving along. Lauren Hughes. Hey, Lauren. Hi. So I would like to seek approval today for us to compete in the third annual City Nature Challenge. Uh, so the City Nature Challenge is going to happen in April, from April 27th through April 30th. And it's a four day competition amongst cities to document the most species within that area. And um, so it's really a global biodiversity project using the platform iNaturalist. And so iNaturalist was developed by the California Academy of Sciences. And it's a citizen science project online which allows you to uh, take pictures using your camera or smartphone of any species around you that you see. And then you can upload that to iNaturalist and that's shared with scientists that use this research or use this data and also with just other enthusiasts. And so we would be hosting um, an event at Barfield on April 28th and we would have guided hikes throughout the day there as well as a training in the morning to use iNaturalist and we also have other trainings throughout the month of April uh, to use iNaturalist as well if you're not familiar with the platform. Uh, so that people are really prepared to go out and uh, document those species the day of. Uh, so it's a really just a, a competition and, and over 50 cities throughout the world are participating this year. Um, so it's very, it's over double the amount of last year and then the year before that only two cities competed. Um, so it's growing in, in a number and so we're really excited for the opportunity to compete. You guys have any questions? Lauren, any questions? So is it a uh, it, is it a three day deal or is it longer than that? Is it, I see your training's the 18th, the 25th, and the 28th of April. Right. So we would have trainings those days, and it would be gearing up for that big event on the 28th. Okay. Um, but the Sydney Nature Challenge itself goes from April 27th through 30th. Okay. All right. Very good. Very neat. When Any you mentioned questions? species, are you referring primarily to wildlife or are we talking about uh, plants or what, what are we talking about? It could be anything. So it could be plants, could be animals, could be fungi, it could be quite literally anything, any sort of <clears throat> wild nature, you know, any could be sort of species around you. <laughs> Human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find them in this element. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. I move for approval. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none. So motion passes for the uh, I Naturalist Training and uh, Program Challenge. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bart, you're going to tell us, uh, give us a recap on the BOGO for Sportscom and Patterson? Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, I think in your package you received our uh, revenue report from our BOGO sale. The buy one get one free sale we do every year and uh, I know if we could bring up the chart on our revenue sale through the years right now on the screen you can see that also but we started this sale on the buy one get one free in 2007 and this is one of the most popular promotions that we do every year this year we started it on December 13th December 13th 
and start and ran through January the 13th of 2018. As always, this has been a huge success as our customers start asking about this program, usually in the summer before we even started in December. Uh, as of January the 13th, we've had, we used to have, in, in January, we used to have the 25% off sale, but now this year we did change that to where we could have the buy one, get one free all the way through the middle of January. And that improved, uh, improved our sales greatly, as you'll see later on in our sales. Our monthly and yearly passes uh, at Sportscom in Patterson Park uh, improved our sales greatly, as you can see by the totals, with uh, selling more, over 14,000 more in our revenue this year at Patterson Park. And at Sportscom, we took in over a whopping $38,000 over the previous years. Uh, after the sales were over, I sat down with our staff and thought about, you know, what brought on this big jump. And one of the big, the big factors that we thought was a great improvement, improved by, which was recommended by our commission and approved, was the taking of credit cards and debit cards. That improved our sales greatly, as we thought that was one of the big reasons. Another reason, probably our sales improved, where I know both Patterson and Sportscom are starting new programs, and one of our biggest programs now is the pickleball which is, we started in the fall, uh, ran by Mr. Ralph Buckingham, and that program has picked up a lot of steam in the past coming months. And now we are start doing it at, at McFadden Community Center and also at Patterson Park. So that's been a very popular new sport that we've brought on at uh, Sportscom Patterson and McFadden. Also, we're challenged, challenged daily as well as monthly on our customer service by our director and assistant director. We try to improve that every year. Hopefully that brought in some new business with people come in to tour our facility. Our front desk staff at Patterson and also a sports car needs to be commended for their hard work during this busy time when we do offer the, back, the uh, buy one, get one free. As of now, we're looking forward to another busy part of the year as the spring is coming on, summer's coming on. We have already started our sign-ups for the baseball and softball leagues. They've been very busy the last two weekends, so hopefully we'll continue our success, and it'll be a busy summer, and we're also starting to take the camp registration here at the 1st of, uh, of March. So if, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Any questions for Bart? I would like to make uh, just uh, a story. We had a customer come in. Saturday, and he mentioned, he said, uh, I'd like to jump into the outdoor pool. I missed the polar bear plunge. <laughs> and I, I said, what? He said, I'd like to jump in the outdoor pool. I missed the polar bear plunge. I want to get a shirt. <laughs> so I said, sir, you don't have to jump in the outdoor pool to get the shirt. <laughs> you know, you can pay your $10 and we'll sell you the shirt. But he said, no, I just wouldn't feel right without jumping in. <laughs> So I went to the guard room. We had a guard down during his downtime. I said, hey, will you walk out there with this, this man who's a regular customer? And, and, and Pat Murphy is his name, as many of you know. So he went out there with him. He did jump in. He came back, and he got his shirt. So we're very customer friendly and try to, try to do what the customers want to do. So that was a, a recap of the polar bear plunge. <laughs> Good for you, Bart. Okay. Very good. And compliments to your large increase here and compliments to all the staff and the facilities and compliments to Pat uh, Murphy for uh, <laughs> jumping in the water, too. I, I can remember in his younger days when he used to lifeguard with you, so you didn't have to watch him too close, I don't think. No, he, he was good, and I appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bart. Thanks for everything you do out there, man. Your folks are awesome. I've been you know, going out there a lot the last six yeah. months or so, and... They're absolutely fantastic. I mean, big smiles all the time and helpful. It's good stuff. Thank Thanks. you very much. Very good. Okay. Moving on down, uh, we've got uh, an update from all our many, I'm sure, upcoming events with, with Becky. And uh, before Becky gets started, and so I don't forget, when, when she gets through, we're going to get a picture made. Jim's going to come up. And uh, since Dee's not here today, he's going to take our picture for the for the rec connect. So, good call. All right, Becky. All right. Well, good afternoon. Um, first, I'm going to touch on a few programs we have that are going on in the month of February. We have um, our post-holidays hikes and walks. 
Um, so Thursdays for the rest of the month of February at 10 a.m. you can meet at the Wilderness Station and go on a hike on the trails there at the Wilderness Station and that is free. And then on Tuesdays you can um, go on our Greenway walks. So next Tuesday um, they're going to meet at Case and Trailhead. Then on February 20th at Central Valley Trailhead and then February 27th at the Barfield Park on the paved trails. So they'll meet at the Wilderness Station. So that is Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and that is also free going on for the rest of the month of February. And it could be 30 degrees or 60 degrees. You never know with the month of February. But we, you know, just dress appropriately and join us for our hikes and our walks. Um, also at the Wilderness Station, we have Earth Lab. That is a program that we do um, predominantly on Wednesdays from 12 to 5, and it's free. And in the month of February, they're discussing birds in winter. So they kind of set up a lab, and um, anybody between the ages of 4 and 9 can just show up any time at the Wilderness Station between noon and 5 on Wednesdays and just kind of check out the lab and learn about birds of winter. Um, then this Saturday, which is February 10th, you are invited to come to the open house at Gateway Island. Um, we're going to have the facility open and the grounds available for tour from 1 to 4 this Saturday. We rent out the facilities, so we just figure it's a good time of year for people to come on out and check it out and decide if they might want to rent it in the warmer months, which will be here upon us pretty shortly. Um, then on this Saturday as well, February 10th, we have the Winter Wonderland Party for Preschoolers, um, and that is at the Wilderness Station. It is for ages 3 to 5, and it is $3, um, but if you have any preschoolers, join them for the Winter Wonderland Party at the Wilderness Station. Then on Saturday, February 17th, we have Raptor Day. We will be celebrating the Birds of Prey. That is at the Wilderness Station. It is free for all ages from 11 to 2. Um, coming up towards the end of this month, our next auditions with Perform Murfreesboro is Madagascar, a, mu a musical adventure, Junior. And the auditions are Wednesday, February 21st, or Friday, February 23rd. You come to one of them, not both. Um, they start at 6.30 p.m. It'll be held in the Washington Theater at Patterson Park. And uh, anybody who is interested, we ask them to reach out to Susan Hicks to get information about the audition process ahead of time. And uh, her email is shicks, so it's S-H-I-C-K-S at murfreesborotn.gov, and she can email you information on auditions. And our next performance is Willy Wonka Kids, which is March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. However, in the time that I created this slide, the show is almost completely sold out. <laughs> So if you are interested in uh, getting a ticket for Willy Wonka Kids, you go to ticketpeat.com slash performmurfreesboro and snag one of the few remaining tickets. Um, and also during the Willy Wonka performances on um, the Saturday performance, March 3rd, just prior to the start of the show, they're going to have the 30th season reveal. And you must have a ticket to the show to see the season reveal. And they will reveal all of the plays that they're going to show next year in the next season. Um, and for more information on any of these programs and our facilities, you can go to murfreesborotn.gov slash parks or pick up a copy of our rec connection. All righty, any questions? Thank you, I've got a thought. Mm -hmm. um, that just trying to figure out how to get this in front of more people and you know, just simply, just if I look through this stuff, I'm always so impressed with all the, the, the uh, things that we have to do. I always wonder how we get that out to people so that more and more people know about it. I'm sure you guys are concerned with the same thing. Um, you know, almost I, I see these Rec Connection magazines out in places like mm -hmm. Sportscom and some some other areas just where I've kind of noticed them. I want do you guys work with um, real estate agents and stuff like that so that people who are coming new to town we, have a real good way to. We do, although that. Um, would require us to print a whole lot more. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they, uh, they have reached us in the past, but they want a lot of them. Gotcha. Um, and that's where it becomes cost prohibitive. But we do, um, you can download the brochure from the website for free. So if they can't get a book in hand. Councilman, we're, gotcha. we're looking at a lot of different ways. Uh, one way is we're probably going to be simplifying the rec connection just a little bit and driving people online or towards uh, some type of mobile app so we can stay current with information because some of it's so you have to do this so far out 
and we can update websites, we can update applications, yeah. that type of thing. Uh, so maybe we can get some more printed if we can kind of condense what's happening there. Uh, yeah, people yeah. are leaning less on uh, the paper model of yeah. marketing, but that's that's a great idea we'll take into consideration. It certainly makes sense to go the, the social media route. I just, yeah. you know, was just sitting here thinking of, you know. Oh, I know. We, 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 I looked at we one of these lo we thinking, love to the look, ideas. My mother-in-law, <laughs> and, you know, there's another one that's perfect for my son, and that how do we, you know, I don't know that they are on the right Instagram page, yep. you know, for my son or Facebook page for my mother-in-law, you know, and so just trying to figure out how, you know, how to point people to the right direction right. one way or the other. We're also wanting to brand our facilities and make sure people know that these are parks and recreation facilities that we have as well, so we'll be featuring those more and whatever that looks like moving forward, but it is evolving. I'm glad you brought that up because we're making a lot of new changes here coming up. All right. Very good. Thank you Thank for you the suggestion. So yes. Thank you, Becky. It's an incredible calendar of events there for sure. We're very lucky and blessed, so thank you. Thank you. And before I go to any additional business, uh, I know that today we had a lot of first-time presenters, uh, I think, and uh, you guys did an awesome job, and uh, we look forward to you coming back, coming back soon with more, more programs and events, so thank you. Is there any other business before we adjourn? Remember? Just just to thank you, uh, since our last meeting, we had the African American Celebration in partnership with Parks and Rec and Patterson Park and had a great night, and I really appreciate that partnership. So thank you, uh, Patterson Park folks, for helping us out with that. Thank you. Okay, don't forget Jim's going to take our picture. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>